Warriors, welcome to the Sports Plus Life podcast, episode number 66. Um, last episode, I, th- I thought it was 66. It was actually 65. Um, this one's really 66. We're going to keep the ball rolling. 66 times 2, 66B. Um, this is going to be 66 in general. I don't know how I messed it up. I was too excited to get back in the groove last week's football started. And football happened. And in... So there is so much other stuff happened this weekend. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get to it all. Um, what we're doing is we're going to start the show off by talking about what the Denver Nuggets did. Denver Nuggets forced a game seven, being down 3-1 again to the L.A. Clippers. A power team like the L.A. Clippers, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, um, Patrick Beverly. We aren't supposed to be in a game seven. But we're here at a game seven. We also, of course, had the uh, um, NFL week one up and running. And um, it was a doozy. So many surprises. Um, so many constants. Is that constant? So many, uh, you know, as you know, things keep changing. Some things never change. What is it? What is it? Uh, some things stay the same. Or I can't. So, anyways, there's some people. Some teams are still doing what they're doing, and that's winning football games. There's still some teams that are still doing what they're doing, that's losing football games. Um, there's still some teams that pulled off big surprises this weekend. Um, not to mention that, we also have the NCAA uh, power, conferences, power Conferences kicked off. Ow, I just bit myself. Um, power Conferences just kicked off. Um, big 12 got it rolling. ACC got it rolling. Um, and I think in week two weeks, we will have the uh, SEC rolling. Obviously, if you don't remember, Big Ten and the Pac-12 will not be playing. They are going to be re-voting. I think, I don't know if they did it yesterday, um, to see when they want to start this season. They could be starting the season next month. Um, so let's, we'll see what happens. I don't know how you fit a whole season in in time to even establish a true champion. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen. They were supposed to kick off in the spring. Now we're talking about kicking it off again, maybe this month, next month. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm going to talk about my fantasy teams. I, I honestly don't remember how all of them did. Um, I know one of them did. Now I got to log in because I don't know um, how well it did. Um, now that I'm talking about it as I'm doing that. And then also UFC Angela Hill versus Michelle Watterson card. Brought, it was a good card. I tell you guys, these are the most unexpected cards. Those want unexpected cards um, are going to be the ones that bring the big heat. Angela Hill and Michelle Watterson weren't supposed to be the main event, and they brought main event energy, as the kids would say. They brought the energy. It was a vibe this weekend. That's what the kids say. I don't say that. I'm grown. Um, also, to top things off, Premier League started back up again this weekend. Um, which we're definitely gonna have to talk about that. Ultimately, it's game day for the Denver Broncos. As, as you can see the sign back here, if you're looking on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports plus life. Um, but if you're not, you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any podcast. Um, the sign should be blue. I think it's blue. I'm going to change it to orange because I don't like, um, is that even orange? Whatever. Looks more than orange and that blue looks like purple. Um, but it's game day. Denver Broncos play the Titans. Um, and also the Pittsburgh Steelers play the New York Giants. Um, the New York Giants. Uh, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard. Ben Roethlisberger is back with Juju Smith and James Conner. Um, and um, the Titans obviously have returning Derrick Henry and Tannehill, A.J. Woods. Um, and the Denver Broncos losing. Von Miller, the Vonster, um, not going to have Cortland Sutton, I don't think, this weekend either. Uh, so that's kind of a huge miss. Um, so now it's time for the rookies, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamlin, to uh, step up. Drew Locke in his second year have to step up. Um, they have no choice. Noah Fant in his second year has to step up. Um, this is a young offense, a crazy young offense. We made the moves to get the offensive line in front of him to protect Drew Locke. Protect Philip Lindsay, Melvin Gordon. Uh, Melvin Gordon's the old head. 
in that group, which is pretty crazy. He hasn't been around a whole long. Um, he's the old head in that group. And, um, you know, we're going to, it's going to be tough against a tough team. Like, especially someone as well coached as, um, is it Coach Venerables? No. Who is a coach? Dude, he's, uh, the old, uh, yeah, Venerables, right? Um, you know, Titans have are, are a tough team to beat. They were in the AFC. Were they in the AFC championship? Or I don't remember where they were last year. They ended up getting smoked by somebody. Was it the Chiefs? I don't remember. It doesn't even matter because um, I am so I mean, my head was spinning. Again, every week in my head spinning this weekend. It's a one-man band here, baby. One-man show. Uno. One pillowcase. You didn't write me. No blanket. You want to go night night? Um, it's just me here, but I mean, I had the TV behind you guys, behind the camera over here, going. My laptop going. My other TV, my little other little monitor going. Had my phone going. Um, everything was working overtime this weekend, and um, nothing could have brought me out of my basement. Nothing. I mean, the hottest girl could be like, "Yo, can you come through?" I'm like, "Nah, you gotta wait till like three o'clock in the morning, baby," because. Ain't nothing else popping off that should be popping off in your house. You know what I'm talking about? So, but the, what I do want to start out with, and um, and I've talked about this before on the podcast. I've talked this be- talked about this before. I've talked about, hold on, I got to check something real quick. I want to make sure you guys are listening to what I'm saying. I want to make sure, we, one, we were recording. And two, I want you guys to listen. Because I said this a few months back. Or even when, um, I think before the season started. But even before this whole bubble started. It's going to be very difficult to beat the Denver Nuggets in seven games. Now, they proved that against Utah. And they're proving it again when they forced a game seven yesterday against the L.A. Clippers. L.A. LA Clippers were favored to go to the Western Conference Finals at the minimum. They're also favored to win the championship. You got Kawhi Leonard, who won the championship before with, last year with the Raptors. You also have Paul George, who's a top, top, quote unquote, top player in the league. Didn't play like that at the beginning of the bubble. Um, but the Denver Nuggets have a guy named Nikolai Jokic. Nikola Jokic. Jokic. Let me put let me put put you up on Joker's numbers really quick. Joker's numbers look like this yesterday. He played forty minutes, thirty four points, fourteen rebounds, double double, seven assists, a steal, and a block. Um. 34 points, which were the best in the game. Better than Paul George, better than Kawhi Leonard, better than anyone in that court. He was the best player on that court. He was the best player in the world at that time. I don't think the Denver Nuggets get enough credit. If you don't know who the Denver Nuggets are now, you do know for sure. This team, and I mean that, this team can go a long way. When we are on all cylinders, working on all cylinders, we are firing on all cylinders. When we are on our game, when Michael Porter Jr. is shooting well, when Gary Harris is playing defense shooting well, when uh, Jamal Murray is shooting lights out, and Nikolai Jokic is passing the ball, rebounding, and ma- making his shots, we are the most dangerous team in the league. I said that. I definitely said that. And... Let me take a look here. Hold on, one player. Hold on, players. Everyone, chill out. And that's even with that's even with the Clippers going to line twenty seven times. We both made it to line twenty seven times. They made eighty percent of their free throws. We made seventy percent. That's even with them going to line that many times. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they went to the line what same amount of times last time too. So, 
this is a dangerous team, the Denver Nuggets. We could go to Game 7. This Game 7 is going to be very, very nerve-wracking. I hate Game 7s, especially when my team is playing. Um, it's going to be a good one. You're going to see different sides of each team. You're going to see a very aggressive, a very competitive, high, what is it, a high, competitive, high, what is it, what am I, high level, high, high level basketball is what you're going to be seeing. There's a lot of bark coming from the LA Clippers team, especially from you know who, who by the way had two points and fouled out in that game yesterday. A lot of bark from somebody who thought they were going to close this out. Now we're at a game seven. Now we're even. Winner takes all. But I've said this plenty of times. This team, not just one player, two players, this team can go a long way. It's going to be very difficult to beat in seven games. There's something about this team. Some match Coach Malone brings the best out of these guys. You know? One constant, we have Nikolai Jokic. It is a joker. Nikolai Jokic. Nikola? How do you say his name? I'm about to say his name. Nikola Jokic. Nikolai Jokic. Hold on. We got to pull it up because I don't want to fuck up his name. He's a goat now. The best big man in the year. If he doesn't win MVP one of these days, man, I am Nikola Jokic. If you go to, like, Wikipedia, it tells you how to say their name, I think. Hold on. It, like, says... Um, remember when we were doing it for, um, you want to just enjoy chick? You guys remember that? Where is it? Where is it? Um, it's around here somewhere. I know it is. Nikola Jokic. Anyways, when that guy is on, that's the one constant we have is Nikola Jokic. Guy's not fast, but he's smart. He is very athletic, but he, even though he's not as quick, he's a smart individual. He knows how to pass. He knows how to. He knows when to shoot. Um, he's a good shooter from outside when he takes his shots. That's one of the that's one of the problems I used to I had in the last last few games. He wasn't taking the shots outside when he needed to. He had a lot of open shots in the last few games that kind of probably would have kept us in the lead or you know got us some wins. Um, God, when that guy plays and that guy shoots and that guy's on. I mean, we're a very tough team to beat. Everyone else just seriously just falls in place. Gary Harris. I'm glad Gary Harris made it back. Gary Harris has made a difference ever since game six of the Utah Jazz series. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. When that kid is on, he is unstoppable. I love the way he moves off the ball. I love the way he looks for the ball. Um, he has to limit it, limit the turnovers. <clears throat> he's still a kid. You got to remember, he's still a baby. He's like 20, 20, 20 years old. 1920. Um, he's got to limit those turnovers. Um, and one thing that's surprised, I don't know if it's surprising, um, but that we've had emerge is a defense. I mean, our defense has been very, very well. Like I said, the addition of Gary Harris Jr. is a huge deal because he plays defense. Um, we held the Clippers to under 100 points. Under 100 points. That's huge in this in this league nowadays. You hold anyone 100, under 100 points, you're doing a good job. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, let me double check here because I want to see if we did that on Friday. Well, we, oh, we won 111, 105, and won 111 and 98 this game. Um, think about it. Um, now, game seven is not going to be easy. Like I said, it's going to be very nerve-wracking for someone like old Uncle Edgar. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to watch it. I actually had it on mute because of all the football going on, but I was watching. Um, and um, that and because, like, I had a... I don't know. I don't know how to explain my setup, but... Like, I had it on my Xbox, and then I had it on ESPN, but on the app... But I was, it was in Spanish, but I wasn't listening to it. So I don't know how animated it was. Um, I might be a sign. Because when they won game two or three, whatever, three, I think is what it was. Um, 
he wanted the camera two or three. They won. Um, I didn't watch the game. So they won the game. I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to watch it. When the next time I watched it again, it gets smoked. And I didn't watch, but I listened. I didn't listen, but I watched. And we won the game. So there's a little bit of a superstition. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but game seven on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, go Nuggies. Let's see what happens. If anything happens, I mean, if for some reason they lose, they don't win the game. I, I'm very proud of this team. Um, but I, from what I've seen, I'm very confident in this team as well. Um, so good luck to the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray, Nikolai, Nikola Jokic, um, Coach Malone, Gary Harris, MPJ, uh, Millsap. I was wondering, I was talking about Millsap. If we have a third quarter that we had, a Millsap third quarter that we have consistently, if we have that Millsap that played in the third quarter, and we have that consistently, we are winning this game too. Millsap has been that missing piece. If he gets consistent, watch out. Lakers have another thing coming. I don't give a shit how much rest you have, boy. We're coming. Um, pause. Anyways, um, that kind of like topped off the weekend. But in addition to all that, we had NFL Week 1 pop off. And boy, did it pop off. Started uh, Thursday night with the... Chiefs smoking. I don't even remember what the score was. Hold on. With the Chiefs smoking the Texans, 34 to 20. Um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. But by the name, I changed his name to Clyde Edgar Hilaire. In, uh, I'm going to in one of my leagues. Um, he, um, I think he performed very well for his first game. They worked him pretty good. He was getting little gainage here and there. He was getting more confidence. Ended up scoring a touchdown. Um, that's huge. That's huge for a rookie. Um, that's huge for the Chiefs too to start out the the season with the win. Um, Patrick Mahomes etching his name again as a early contender for the MVP. Um, but also Week One brought a lot of surprises too. Um, but a lot, a lot of surprises. I am, I was very surprised by the Panthers by one. The Panthers brought it. I was watching. That was one of the games I was watching uh, to the Raiders. They brought it to the Raiders. Um, a veteran coach, obviously, in John Gruden. Matt Rule coming in from Baylor. Um, his first year. But it showed that he is a first-year coach because at the goal line with the game on the line, he does not give it. I think a fourth and goal, I believe, is what it was. He does not give it to Christian McCaffrey. They end up getting stuffed and not being able to win the game. That is a rookie mistake right there. You have the best running back in the league on your team, and you're not giving him the ball. You should have learned from Pete Carroll and the Seahawks in that Super Bowl. You give it to your running back right there. Plain and simple. Um, A rookie mistake, but he brought it, man. That team was prepared. Um, very unfortunate though for the Raiders that Henry Ruggs, their rookie receiver, was playing well up until that point, got hurt early in the game too. I think before the second half. Um, and I don't know exactly what the prognosis was there. I didn't see. Um, take a look here. I don't know if it'll say here. Injuries. I don't think it does. Hold on. No, I don't know. I don't even know what happened to Henry Ruggs, but that's uh, kind of a big blow um, to that team. Um, who needs that speed? Henry Ruggs is fast, boy. He's fast. Um, but I was very surprised by the Panthers. They only lost 34 to 30. Um, and they almost came back in that fourth quarter, scoring 15 points. Um, and that's in that fourth quarter, the kicker had 15 points in the half. It was only 17 to 15 going into halftime. Um, kicker had 15. But who was their kicker? Jeez. Um, I don't know who had it. I don't think anyone had him in fantasy. But if you did, buckets. That's an easy what? 
30, 30 points from the guy? Something like that? Something stupid like that? Maybe? I don't even know what that was. Who was it? Okay, I got to find out now. I have to find out now because this is going to bother the shit out of me. You guys know how it works out. We're going to move forward. Uh, box score. Um, it's going to tell me right here. Box score. Joe Sly. I don't think anyone had Joe Sly. Uh, Let me see here because... um, Joe Sly... Should have his points here, doesn't it? Oh, he actually had twelve points. He's a different league. Oh, it's still had a lot of points though. Um, from a kicker, that's pretty good. Um, fantasy. Uh, um, anyways, moving on. But yeah, Panthers did a whole such a good job. Of I don't know what the hell's going on here. What the hell's going on here? What's going on? Oh, there it is. Um, technical difficulties, one man band here, guys. Um, <laughs> um, other surprises, obviously, was the Washington Redskins beating the Philadelphia Eagles 27 to 17. I mean, Carson Wentz is the future. Everyone's like, Carson Wentz is, Carson Wentz is that. Yeah, no, Miles Sanders. But you still have Carson Wentz. You guys end up losing 17 to 27. You guys are up 17 to 7 at halftime. And then go just get skunked the rest of the game. How does that happen? Who is that? I never thought Carson Wentz was elite. I never got it. But here we are. Let's see. Let's let's take a look at Carson Wentz's um numbers really quick because um he went. Let me see here. 24 of 42. 270 yards. Two touchdowns. Two picks. That does not say he got sacked eight times. He did not get sacked eight times. Let me see this. Five. Two. No way, that's eight sacks, bro. I know what that means. Three sacks. No, yes. Right here, look, it's right here on this side. I'm looking at the wrong side. Shut up. Um, I gotta mute this. That's what I gotta do. Um, JD Kissick. Where did I just lost it? Cause I got fucking distracted by this piece of shit. He got sacked eight times. Chase Young was involved. That's why they got him so high. Eight times he was sacked. That's on the offensive line. That's offensive line. That's quarterback as well. Throwing two picks. Then you have Dwayne Haskins throwing a touchdown. No picks. 17 to 31. But the big, I mean, what are we doing? In my best, uh, crap. In my best, um, what the hell's his name? I don't like him either. Was it Stu? No. What are we doing? Taylor Twelman. What are we doing? I mean, that's. And by the way, I'm talking about picks. I still have one more game to go. I'll talk about it next week. It's not looking good. Uh, so far, Uncle Edgar's one and three. Could be one and four by tonight. Hopefully, the Denver Broncos pull it off against the Tennessee Titans um, to save me a little bit. Um, whatever, man. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, but that's really surprising. And not to, t- to top, top it off, let's talk. Let's talk about Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera is just built different. Had a scheduled IV in the halftime. Dwayne Haskins had to give the halftime speech. Scheduled IV because the guy has cancer. Got diagnosed with cancer. Still out there coaching, and now coaching a former Super Bowl coach. 
Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Ron Rivera, former Super Bowl champion himself, Chicago Bears. Let's talk about that man. Give him the credit. Give him the credit. He he's he's changing that team around. Help changing the name. Help changing the narrative of this football team. In re- while be, while battling cancer, while battling 2020, the pandemic. Give this guy a lifetime achievement award. Give he's a lifer for sure. Uncle Edgar, he's a sportsman's life lifer, in my book. That's a man right there. Big surprise. Um, the Jaguars beating the Colts, twenty-seven to twenty. Now I sat here. We take a look here, because I sat here and I said, "Well, maybe Philip Rivers doesn't have a good offensive line. Maybe Philip Rivers just the throws picks because he's getting sacked all the time." Well, he didn't get sacked. He didn't get sacked once, but he still threw two picks. This is a Philip Rivers problem. He still threw two picks and only one touchdown. Still threw for over three hundred yards. Maybe he doesn't have the receiving core. T.Y. Hilton was like un- was not involved. Only caught four pit four catches, fifty three yards. Now he spread. Now Philip Rivers spread the ball around very very well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten crack commandments. Nine, um, different receivers. Well, same thing with the Jaguars. They had ten different receivers, and Gordon Minshew threw no picks, three touchdowns. I mean, and let me take a look here. No rushing touchdowns. No. By the way, this is, this is, this is I don't know what's going on with the Colts, but Jaguars rushed the ball 23 times with under three different uh, rushers, under 100 yards, 91 yards total, no touchdowns. All this was receiving. Now, there goes a the narrative that you have to have a running game for the get, passing game to work. Give Gordy Minshew in that mustache, it plays. How do they say that in uh, Ocean Eleven? Oh, the mustache plays. Oh, it plays. Or is it the nose? It's the nose plays. That's what they say. The nose plays. It plays. Um, you got to look. Philip has got to look himself in the mirror, man. Maybe you should have joined Eli Manning. He's been like, Eli, I'm coming with you. Me and my kids, we're coming with you. All nine of us. All ten, ten of them. We're all coming home. We're all going back to Utah. We're going to live a good life. A Mormon life. Ain't no one going to bother us. Probably should have done that. But we'll see. It's game one. And you know my saying here. Only time will tell. Maybe they'll get it together. Um, maybe they won't. But... Philip Rivers is back to his old tricks. Me thinking it wasn't because he had enough time. He didn't get sacked once. Didn't get sacked. What is it all? And there's one of six. So Jacoby Brissett was in for a couple plays. One of six. This is what it says under sacks. He got sacked. Jacoby Brissett got sacked. And I think that's because he's a runner. Like, I don't know what that was about, but he got sacked there. Um... Marlon Mack got hurt, throwing out, um, maybe out for the year. So, I'm going to be looking for Jonathan Taylor, especially Naeem Hines, on waivers. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, another surprise for me was Joe Burrow. Honestly, Joe Burrow... Probably not a surprise to a lot of people, but it surprised me. I think he handled himself very, very well. I didn't watch. I got to watch the highlights, but what I did watch, it looked good. Rush for a touchdown. Got his first touchdown. Um, 23 of 36. 193 yards. Did get picked off once. No touchdowns. Um, but did do a whole lot. I, I, in my opinion, did a whole lot better than Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's a work in progress where someone, a rookie in general, um, you don't expect Joe Burrow to turn around the shitty Bengals team in one game, you know. Um, when you have good support like Joe Mixon, 
You know, you have that like Joe Mixon, you have AJ Green to throw to, Tyler Boyd. Um You know, I think they do be bad. I think the defense has all their own against the Chargers. Sixteen to thirteen, not bad at all. They rush for t- it was not even Eckler rush for touchdown, so maybe this is there should be some questions we should be throwing the Chargers way. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm over here watching Hunter Henry. Is that right? Hunter Henry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Never mind. Hunter Henry's five receptions, 73 yards. Um, I was thinking of, dude, what is wrong with me today? Their backup quarterback. What's his name? This is going to throw, this is going to hurt me. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh my God. Oh my God. Everyone chill. Uh, oh my god what is wrong with me dude Justin Herbert it's a long weekend man everyone shut up mind your business um Joe Burrow did good I think there's a lot of upside for Joe Burrow um and um the Bengals team I think they add one or two more pieces. And then they'll be a dangerous. I think they'll be very dangerous. I mean, especially with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is one of those stubborn dudes. Um, I just want to take no for an answer. And uh, they're going to do work. And I think his drive, his mentality, his work ethic, I think they're going to go. They're going to be good eventually. Maybe not this year. Maybe watch out for the year two and three. Add a couple more pieces. Um, and do work. Um, great performances this weekend. Obviously, goes to the Chiefs. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we don't, that goes without saying. Um, you also give props, obviously, to the Ravens. Um, the big three there: Lamar Jackson, um, Marquise Brown, Mark Mike Andrews, Oklahoma boys, doing work, showing out in the NFL. I mean, QBU up in this bitch which we'll definitely get to them here in a little bit. Um, they did what was supposed to look at. It. Lamar Jackson, 20-25, 275 yards passing, three total touchdowns, um, three passing touchdowns, two to Mark Andrews, and I think one, let me see, to Willie Sneed. That's the one, the Willie Sneed one. I remember that one. Um, Marquise Brown caught five for 101 yards, so he's averaging 20 yards a catch. Huge. That team's going to be dangerous again in the UFC. In the UFC. In the AFC. We'll get to the UFC later. AFC. Um, but the Browns, they started out a lot of promise. And I, I was very, I was very wormsome because I was like sitting there. I was like probably going through a whole quarter and OBJ hasn't caught shit. I think they even threw them two or three times and he dropped a couple of them. Um yeah, I don't know what to make of that team. I mean, you gotta. I, would, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, "Oh, day, you know, Baker Mayfield is the goat anymore." I say Baker Mayfield is the goat because he's from Oklahoma. I'm gonna support my boy 100. percent He has great story behind him. Um, I think, I think, and I hope they turn it around. They added the great, the you know, they, it was it's a very different offseason for a lot of people, for a lot of people, especially for someone like the Browns who are on their fourth head coach in two years. They have, they're not gelling. They don't have the preseason game. They don't have the time in because of this pandemic like a lot of other teams don't. Um, you can even tell week one was very sloppy on every, every any game you watched. Um, we'll see. Um, I think they'll turn around. I think they'll be okay. Um, but you never know. The only time will tell. Um, other teams that impressed the shit out of me, Uncle Edgar. Oh, a great performance is Josh Allen. You guys already know, I've talked about Josh Allen here. The guy's a beast. Josh Allen. Is he from Wyoming? No. Is it Rosen? Josh Allen. Is he from? Dude, I am like fucking just losing my shit. This year. Um, is he the one from Wyoming? No. He is... From yeah, he's from Wyoming. Josh Allen, the Cowboy, um, dude. What about this guy though? 
this guy, my guy, that's what kids say, the my guy, tearing it up. Um, Josh Allen, just real quick, I'm, I don't want to keep too long with all these fucking numbers, but I'm very impressed by Josh Allen. I always have been, and I always thought that AFC is going to be running through this team. They could be the AFC, champ, AFC East champions, um, and they're going to be a big threat. They were a threat last year. How they lost that game last year, I don't know. Um, in the playoffs, I think that was to, was that the one in the Titans? Yes, I think it was. Um, two touchdowns, threw for two touchdowns, over 300 yards passing, and then also rushed for a touchdown. Big dick numbers. You also add in people like Stephon Diggs. John Brown, fast as AF. And um, did work, man. That's all, it's Josh Allen. Josh Allen, another guy you got to look out for. My boy, another Oklahoma boy, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals did work against the defending NFC champions, 49ers. Um, I got scared there because 49ers, uh, George Kittle got, took a hit to his knee, and I looked like a, a hyperextended, and I was like, oh, shit, he is done. But he ended up coming back and playing again. Um, Kyler Murray. Is different, bro. By the way, they didn't throw a pick. They throw one pick. Grapple did not throw a pick. Do for touchdowns, 230 yards. But also rush for a touchdown, almost 100 yards. But the best rusher on his team. Um, also has DeAndre Hopkins throwing. He has DeAndre, throwing to DeAndre Hopkins. We had a touchdown called back. Um, Larry Fitzgerald still available. And also you still have people like um, Christian Kirk, Kenyon Drake. Yeah. But um, the Niners, I don't know where they went wrong here. Because Jimmy G threw for two touchdowns, one to Mostert, and then one to McKinnon. I don't know where they went wrong. It was a good game. I was kind of like watching the Nuggets and all that going, but I was definitely keeping a keen eye on my boy Kyler. K1. Um, God, it's very going to be a very excited year. Cowboys Rams played. I didn't pay attention. I don't give a shit. Jalen Ramsey's trash. Cowboys aren't. CD Lamb is a other Oklahoma boy who I'm going to be watching, of course, from the Cowboys. Um, Mark Cooper doesn't deserve the money. Um, feed Zeke. That's how you're going to win the game. You don't need to be throwing the game. You don't need to be throwing at all when you have Zeke on your team. You just give him the ball. He'll do the rest. Um, Seahawks tore it up against the Falcons and then the Lions and Bears game was a banger that I was trying to watch. I couldn't watch. And the Packers, who I believe went in the game underdogs against the Vikings, um, ended up smoking them 43-34. Um, Aaron Rodgers. So far, if I'm going to, and then also the Patriots beat the Dolphins 21-11. Not very exciting, but they got the job done. Um, if I'm going, um, MVPs, I'm going off MVPs right off the bat. You're definitely throwing Russell Wilson at the top. I mean, the guy went, what, 30? Let me see here. Where is it at? They're going to have it right here. Russell Wilson. 31 of 35. 322 yards passing and four touchdowns. That's MVP number one. You can go Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to go Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. Right now, five quarterbacks. In my MVP race. I can't think of anyone else. More deserving. You can even throw Josh Allen on there. You have to look out for Josh. I'm throwing Josh Allen honorable mention. That's what I'm doing. Shut your mouth. I didn't even talk about the Saints Buccaneers game. Which was a big deal. Which went exactly how I thought it was going to go. Alvin Kamara tore him up. Drew Brees tore him up. Um... Tom Brady didn't look like Tom Brady. The people always hoped he would be, especially if you're a Buccaneers fan. Um, the Gronk probably only caught, what, two passes, maybe one passing? Let me take a look here. Gronkowski caught two passes for 11 yards. Um, let me see. What Did he throw any picks? Tom Brady threw two picks, two touchdowns. Who did he throw it to? He threw it to one, one to Mike Evans. That's right, deep. Mike Evans only caught one pass for Two yards and a touchdown. They were heck. They were they were on his ass on 13's ass all day. Um, 
yeah, week one in a nutshell. Two, still two more games to go this week. Um, as you can tell, it was very overwhelming, but very, very fun, very, very needed. A great distraction from what's going on in the world. Um, and the only fans were in Jacksonville. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Week three, I know here in Denver is when they're going to start having fans. I think only 20% capacity, which will be, what, 16,000 or something like that, is what they said. So I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't know how it's going to go, but keep your eye out. Hopefully, slowly but surely, by the end of the year, Super Bowl will have people in attendance at fucking games. Um, also, NCAA popped off this weekend. I don't even know how to talk. I don't even know how to go from here. NCAA popped off this weekend. Um, let me pull it up because Uncle Edgar wasn't ready for that. Um, NCAA. Why did they do the top 25 here? Scores. Um, I know Oklahoma won 48-0 to zero against Missouri State, which they should have done. Spencer Rattler era. Got busy. Got started with the bang. Four touchdowns. Was only playing a half, I think. Went 14-17, 290 yards, four touchdowns. Charlie Rambo. Um, Charlie, ball out. Charlie is what we call him. Um, another dude to look out for. Following the steps of C.D. Lamb, D.D. Westbrook. Um, you know, Kenny Stills, those type of dudes. Um, you also look Seth McGowan. Seth McGowan looked pretty good. With no Kennedy Brooks, we don't have... Um, What's the name? We transferred to Ohio State. I totally forgot. I'm just blanking. Dude. I think it's old age, guys. Um, they did well. Clemson obviously won 37 to 13 against Wake Forest. Um, Notre Dame and Duke. Notre Dame won 27 to 13 over Duke. Um, Texas won 59 to 3 against UTEP. And the North Carolina coach Mack and the boys won 31 to 6 against Syracuse. Iowa State getting upset in Ames, Iowa, 31 to 14. In Ames, Iowa. You guys don't get it, how difficult it is to go into Ames, Iowa, their home stadium, to win a game from the Big 12, let alone someone like Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, going in there and winning 31-14. Now, were there people in attendance? I don't even remember, to be honest with you. That's different. But they went in there and they won 31-14. to um, Someone else... No, I thought someone else was getting upset, but I don't think... It doesn't matter. Um, that was it, man. If you go on Heisman right now, we're we're gonna do the same thing with the NFL. If you're going to Heisman right now, I'm going. Obviously, Spencer Rattler. If we're just going off of this, we're going by week by week. So we'll see Spencer Rattler, Trevor Lawrence, and Etienne. I don't remember his kid's name. Um, Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. Um, and Sam Ellinger. Got to throw Sam Ellinger in there through five touchdowns. You don't want to. But I had no choice. Um, it was just crazy weekend, man. I love these type of weekends. I love fall time. Um, and I'm just glad we have some sort of sports during, with all this going on, um, with everything going on in the world, which is so much anger, all the protesting, um, all the resentment, um, the pandemic. Um, not to mention other stuff people in pandemic are dealing with it's depression, the suicide. Um, a lot of people aren't working, the unemployment rate. Um, people are having babies born and all this. You know, there's so much other stuff going on. Um, this is just kind of one of those, a bright spot, you know, with so much negativity going on in the world. And I'm, I was just so blessed to have this as a distraction this weekend. Um, it was very well needed because I too, I mean, we're all in a deep spot. I know a lot of people are in just have not been themselves in the f- in months. Um, and I'm in, I'm one of them. You know, a lot of people, are, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are dealing with weird stuff. We're in crazy times right now, and this was a great distraction. This was amazing. It was so fun to watch. Um, I I welcome it every weekend, and um, I can't wait for next weekend. Um, but one thing that's always kept us sane, kept me sane, and has always kept the ball rolling, even through this pandemic, is the UFC. The UFC has popped it off every week. Damn near, it feels like four or five weekends, six times a month sometimes. Um, Michelle Watterson versus Angela Hill gave us a good one. 
they stood there in their bang and they banged a little bit. Michelle Watterson obviously going more on the grappling side helped her win the fight. I thought Angela Hill was a better fighter, in my opinion. If I watched that fight over, I might slightly give it to Angela Hill, but I mean, I could see it going to Watterson as well. Um, Watterson did have some takedowns, but I, I think they need to change the rules with takedowns and shit like that because she really didn't do anything with the takedowns. I think even in the third round, third or fourth round, like she just laid on top of her and they didn't do anything. I don't, I just don't count that. I think they need to somehow, somehow, some way, somebody to sit down, get a committee together, relook these rules and just get them fixed. We've talked about this before in the podcast. Um, I don't think Michelle Watterson did enough, but here's what it is. Um, I thought Angela Hill won the fight. Angela Hill earned my respect. Has always had my respect. Um, won the, he always wants to fight. Those people who love to fight. I love the people who love to fight. I Angela Hill came to mind when I heard Dustin Poirier say, oh, I'll fight for the right price. <coughs> I'll fight Tony Ferguson for the right price. I hear that from people who are afraid to lose. That's what I hear that from. Um, I hear that for people who are afraid to lose. I heard that from John Jones when talking about fighting Francis Ngannou. Why? Because you're going there taking a risk to getting knocked the fuck out by Francis Ngannou. Same thing with Dustin Poirier. He knows what he's getting himself into with Tony Ferguson. Um, I think that's why you sit there and you say, well, I want money. I don't blame him for wanting money. Uh, but let's be honest here. Let's, let's, I want a little bit of honesty here. Does someone like Dustin Poirier deserve that type of money? I don't, I don't even know what type of money he's talking about. I want to know what type. If you come out and say, this is what I want, maybe this could help your cause a little bit more. Maybe the fans will get behind you and be like, hey, this guy deserves X amount of money. Now, if you're talking about 50 million, 60 million, you're like, okay, let's take it easy. Now we're taking five, maybe four or five million. Yeah, I think you deserve that type of money. I think Tony Ferguson deserves that type of money. Justin Gaethje, the top guys deserve a lot of money. I think eventually we're gonna, that's where we're going to get to. Top guys are going to earn a lot of money. Um, I, th- I think that's where we can get to. But in a pandemic, I mean, what, there's no crowds. There's that revenue out the door. Um, there, there, you know, there's no, a lot of pay-per-view buys. There's, there's DC Corn, Daniel Cormier and Stephen Miocic did 500K buys for a heavyweight championship fight. So if you're asking for more, more, more money than DC and Stipe, I think you're out of your mind. But if you're asking the ballpark, maybe a little bit under than that, I got you. I got you. But if something there needs to be a little bit transparent. There needs to be like, what do you want to get paid? Like, throw your shit out there. The power of social media, the power of Twitter, Instagram, the power of the people holds a lot of weight, especially in the day and age when all we're using is technology. All we're using is social media to get our names out there, get different stuff out there, get shit canceled. Maybe we could use social media to get shit put in the right place. So I won't does. I mean, if Dustin Poirier was a dude, I mean, Dustin Poirier is a dude. He could fight people. He could fight anybody. He'll go out there and bring the fight. But what I hear people say, I want this amount of money, especially in MMA. I, I think people who's like, who know they're going to lose, who have lost, who thinks they want more than that's what I list. That's right here. That's what I hear when I hear, I want this amount of money. I'm a prize fighter. He's never won a prize. He's won an interim championship that got, and he got deleted. By the champion, Habib Nurmagomedov, deleted, abused. He was crying after the fight. I mean, don't call yourself a prize fighter. We haven't won a prize. You know what I'm saying? And John Jones, if he want, I mean, I, he's a prize fighter. He's the best to ever do it. Anderson Silva is a prize fighter. Daniel Cormier, Stipe Miocic, prize fighters. Habib Nurmagomedov. These guys have won prizes. Dustin Poirier has just put on good fights. Here's what it is, man. Um. Anyways, um, onto the card. Which, like I said, these more unexpected cards are um are bangers. Um, Ottoman Azat Azatar knocking out Kama Worthy. Great fight. Roxanne Mataferi brought the fight. Like I said, you don't know what kind of fight Roxanne's going to bring. Roxanne is going to bring against Andrea KGB Lee. Won by decision. Pretty close decision. It's a Roxanne Mata- Mataferi fight. That's how they go. Ed Herman versus Mike Rodriguez. Very big controversy. Mike Rodriguez thought he had the fight won. Beat him. 
Um, ultimately, Ed Herman ended up coming back. The ref didn't call the fight. Um, ended up slapping on a Camaro, winning by the submission in the third round. And midway through the third round, which is which was uh, Dana, Uncle Dana did not like it. He didn't like it very much. Ended up giving Mike Rodriguez his win money. Um, yeah, I'm mean, Herman, man. Fuck you. 39 years old. He look out of shape, though. That's just me, though. He's just older, dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, Bobby Green blah, 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 won against Alan Patrick. I wasn't that impressed by that fight. Um, I think there was a fight that I saw here. Nope, everything else is good. I mean, I try to watch as much possible. So much going on this weekend, players. I'm trying to keep my head on the swivel. I need a schedule. I don't have enough time for all the sports, but I love it. I love all the sports. Ba- I didn't even watch baseball, and God knows. <laughs> By the way, there's also hockey, playoff hockey, WNBA, um, obviously baseball going on. <coughs> so much going on. Um. But, oh, wait, I wanted to get to my fantasy team. Let me see what my fantasy teams are doing, guys, because I might need you guys' just help here. Because I have, let's take a look at my CD Burner. That's one of my names. CD Burner, I am losing 94.24 to 116.26 with, hold on, look at my matchup. Where's my matchup? I need a matchup, damn it. Um, oh, let me click on here. Um... Oh, I'm going to lose. I'm not coming back in this one. I still have Noah Fant and Juju's play tonight, but he still has Roethlisberger and Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I'm losing. Who did I leave on the bench? So this is what I left on the bench, though. Marquise Brown probably would have done a whole lot better than uh, Michael Thomas. I also had Jamison Crowder on the bench and Jimmy G on the bench, which could be Jimmy G could be used as a offensive player. So he would have done a whole lot better than Singletary. Would have put me in better position. It's 12, 13, 25. That would put me in the lead. Damn it, dude. Every year it happens to me. One or two changes that just screw me. Um, So we forget about that one. Um, What is his name? James Edgar C- Hilaire. Is that my name now? Clyde Edwards Hilaire. God, what's wrong with me today? Um, I won that one. Was still I still have a uh, Juju to play tonight um, in this league. I like Juju. If you haven't noticed, Juju, a fellow gamer, um, I did work, man. I did work in that one. Twenty points. Let me see. My bench did okay. It doesn't matter about the bench now. I want you guys to share with me your fantasy teams, your fantasy scores um, every week. I want to know how you guys do. I'm gonna pick your brains, and I'm going to um, steal your ideas. Um, one more I have Baker of Chains, my old name. I got to change that. I can't, I can't Baker in any of my names anymore. Um, I'm down 14 points. Phil Lindsay left to play tonight. I think he could do it. Let me take a look here though. Now, nah, cause Patrick Holmes put up 20 points. Travis Kelsey put up 17 and Todd Gurley put up 13, seven. I would have been in good shape. I had Bobby Anderson, which I was going to do, but as I said, Four DraftKings, three fantasy teams, and I forgot to change that one. I did not want Tyler Boyd in there, but I couldn't change it. I forgot to change it. So what are you going to do? Go to put me in the lead. Um, let's see. What else? There was something else. Pop, pop, uh, Premier League popped up this weekend. The champions, Liverpool, had trouble with Leeds this weekend. Um, and I almost took the bet. Leeds was plus 950 or an 850. Put 100 down, you would have won 950 or something like that. Um I almost did it. And good thing I did because I didn't because that's just how betting works. Um, Liverpool got a penalty to win the game 3-3 at the end. A weak penalty. Come on, dude. I don't, I don't get it, man. That's just not a penalty for me. It just wasn't. Liverpool got these chances. They got so lucky. Um, it's a lucky team. They've always been a lucky team. Whatever. Um... Yeah, a lot of, I'll get to the Premier League next time. I'm just too much to talk about. My head's spinning. I am tired. It is Monday. I need more energy drink, more coffee, more cowbell. I need a Zen TFO. Uh, like Big Sean says, I need to Zen the fuck out. Um, but it was a great weekend nonetheless. It was a great distraction. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Played some video games with the boys. 
Um, and um, you guys keep it up, man. You guys keep working, keep grinding, um, keep doing you. We're going to get out of this slump, all right? We're getting out of the slump mentally. We're going to be in a better position here soon. Why? Because fall's right around the corner. Gobs, goblins and ghouls are around the corner. Trick-or-treating. We have Thanksgiving around the corner. Christmas around the corner. Next thing you know, we're going to have to be in 2021 with a vaccine, with help. Um, hopefully a new president. So don't forget to vote. Take care of yourselves. I love you guys. Holler at your boy. Sports was life. YouTube, Sports of Life, Instagram, and Twitter, MRAKACO, Instagram, and Twitter, twitch.tv slash MRAKACO. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Episode number 66, the real episode number 66. I will see you guys. Episode number 67. Late.